Hey everyone, welcome to the results video of the Eurofighter contest. In this uh, round we had 35 uh, completed entries and uh, yeah, there were some really great uh, entries in this round. Um, everybody had to make a Eurofighter coaster. It's a type of coaster from the German company uh, Gerstlauer. And uh, yeah, one thing that everybody had to include in their uh, Eurofighter coaster was a beyond vertical drop. Uh, like the one you can uh, see here. Anyway, um, since we have 35 entries and I don't want to make the video too long, I think it's uh, best if we just uh, continue uh, continue on. Uh, I'll start with the one that got last place and I'll finish with the winner of the round. Oh, by the way, um, if you want to see these entries for yourself, which I recommend, you can download them all from my uh, Discord server. It's completely free. And then you can see these entries uh, at your own pace, because uh, I will uh, only show them for about one minute or so. Uh, so yeah, I really recommend uh, looking at them for yourself. Anyway, here we have the one that got last place. Uh, this one was made by uh, the Ironics. Um, so yeah, we have the Eurofighter leaving the station here, going with a little chain uh, chain lift hill, and then uh, here there's this uh, there's this uh, strange. Uh, lift hill upwards. I do like how we use these uh, abstract glass objects to sort of make it look like a tunnel. Um, then it travels vertically upwards, then it has a beyond vertical drop here. Um, yeah, what most people didn't really like was uh, how wide this tower was. They look much better when they're more sleek, so when you use uh, a more steep uh, transition here, then you can make it uh, less wide and then it uh, usually looks a lot better. Now, other than that, there's a double stacked helix here. Um, I often see beginner players uh, stack these helixes. Um, these helixes uh, usually yeah, don't look very nice. It's much nicer if you have some uh, inclined slopes leading into a helix, uh, stuff like that. So yeah, when you make a coaster, really, you should try to avoid using these uh, stacked helixes. Because most uh, players don't really uh, like them. Now here we have a set of uh, inversions, uh, there's also a bit of a brake section here. Um, you should really avoid putting uh, brake sections or small brake sections or small booster sections in the middle of your track. If your coaster doesn't make it through a section of track, just make the that particular track piece a little bit lower. That's usually already a lot better. Um, why? One thing about Eurofighters is that their uh, layout is usually very compact. Um, and yeah, this one actually encloses uh, quite a large area. So that's also something uh, which was not uh, really uh, particularly good. Um, when your coast is right next to a path, it's usually a good idea to put a fence next to it. So guests uh, wouldn't be able to actually step on the coasted track. That uh, can often be very... Uh, very painful. So yeah, that you should try to avoid that. Well, the real guests won't do it, of course, but uh, it's probably a good thing to keep in mind if you want to add some realism to your park. Now, one thing I do like about this park is uh, this area actually right next to the entrance. Uh, I like the density of this area. Some nice little gardens and buildings. So yeah, this is actually my favorite part of, the, of this uh, park. Okay, here we have the entry made by Zach Combs. Um, he's also uh, a newcomer on my uh, Discord server. Um, he made this Eurofighter coaster over here. But um, one thing that's really annoyed most people is that it gets launched from the station here at high speed. And then it goes through this uh, barrel roll here, also at that great speed. And uh, yeah, really, when you make an inversion like this, uh, even if it's okay stat-wise, uh, most people who feel the park will not like uh, something like this. So yeah, this, uh, that's also why this park uh, didn't get scored very high by, by the voters. Now also, in this section, uh, the coaster has a high speed. Um, yeah, so when you have these elements like this, you should really try to make sure that your coaster goes through it at a speed that would be... Uh, that at least looks comfortable for the, for the riders. Also, long straight sections like this should really be uh, generally be avoided. 
Now, there's also an extra uh, coaster here, a yellow one. Um, it's probably a bit too too many uh, hills up and down. Uh, it looks quite uh, crowded here. Um, so yeah, when you make a coaster, it's often a good idea to uh, actually give it some breathing space, just so uh, people can easily follow it through the through its layout. Okay, here we have the entry from Jung Zarathustra. Um, I hope I pronounced that correctly. Um, so yeah, the entrance is, uh, I think, right over here. It's called Big Dipper. Then here it travels upwards on this vertical lift. Then here it goes down and has this uh, <laughs> this drop here that goes. Uh, I think this is the most beyond vertical uh, drop that we've seen in this uh, contest. Um, so yeah, I think this is might be a little bit too much beyond vertical. Uh, this, uh, yeah, you, you won't see any real coasters uh, do this. Um, also some uh, strange supports here. There's a tower here with some curved uh, supports uh, for the track. Um, I think that's what that's here because uh, in the original submission of this park, uh, the vertical lift hill actually. Uh, went up here, then it had a curve, and then it had the beyond vertical drop. And Eurofighters don't uh, do that, so that's why this was not uh, allowed. And then he changed it to this. Personally, I would have just put this tower right under here, under the coaster, instead of these uh, crazy <laughs> angled supports. Um, yeah, other than that, again, quite a big area enclosed by the coaster, so that also didn't really help. Um, of course, there's also some other rides here on the plot. Also, a chairlift going from down here to up here. <laughs> it actually has a really crazy feature. Because you see these uh, chairlifts uh, going up this uh, helix. Um, but yeah, the crazy part is uh, you see the you see the chairlift right here. And actually it teleports a few times uh, before it, uh, it ends up right here. So yeah, that's... Uh, <laughs> Probably not the, what was intended for this ride. So really when you make a ride like this you should uh, check it and see that it doesn't do anything crazy. Alright, in 32nd place we have this entry made by uh, the Shaq. Oh, he made this very tall Eurofighter. Um, it's probably a little bit too tall if we check the height. It's 46.5 uh, meters. And already this first inversion is at 24 meters. So there's more than 20 meters of height difference, and that automatically also means that the coaster is very fast here. Um, yeah, you should really uh, try to manage your speed well when making a coaster like this. Also, this hill is quite low, so the speed will be very high here. Um, so yeah, really, when you make a coaster like this, you have some inversions. Try to make it go through through them at a, at an acceptable speed, something that. Uh, looks comfortable and if you do that you also don't need this little brake sections here in the middle of the track i think i really don't like when people uh, put these small brake sections in the track um, also on real coasters uh, nobody really likes trim brakes so they're generally best avoided just to make your coaster a little bit lower and then the speed will usually already be a lot better now one thing that also uh, got uh why well, yeah, so one thing that the voters also didn't like in this park was that uh, the that the player actually left some track texture here in the park um, that served no purpose or, other than being able to copy and paste them to other places but yeah you should really uh, remove those from your final entry when you submit an entry to me I really make sure that uh, stuff like this is not there anymore because that I, that makes it look a little bit sloppy other than that, there's some nice uh, uh, trees here, some plants. I like the little lake over here. Um, there's actually a piece of... Uh, yeah, this is what you get when you uh, s remove supports over water with a uh, tile inspector. Then your track may become invisible here, so that's what happens here. You should really be careful with uh, stuff like that. Now, also there are some buildings here in the corner. Some of the buildings do look nice. Um, 
But yeah, when you have a building like here made of brick, for example, you should really give it some windows. Uh, a building without windows uh, will often look quite strange. Alright, let's move on to the next entry. Okay, here we have the entry made by Herbart. Um, again, quite a big uh, area enclosed by the by the coaster. Um, what I do like about the coaster is that, uh, well, out of the station it has this roll and then it has this uh, launched uh, or this upward launched uh, section. I think that's quite uh, cool. You don't see that very often. After that, there are several of these inversions. Uh, a little bit of a weird uh, small top hat here. Um, yeah, going up vertically uh, into a hill. That's usually best avoided if you want to make a realistic coaster. Um, so yeah, one thing many people didn't really like was these wooden uh, supports. When you make a Eurofighter coaster, it's best to just stick to these uh, steel supports rather than wooden supports. They don't really make uh, sense on a steel coaster. Now, uh, other than that, it's, uh, there's just uh, a lot of uh, jungle here. Um, when you do make a jungle, it's, it's really the best to probably not just uh, spam all the stuff that's in the jungle um, tab here. For example, you should probably go easy on the on these carnivorous uh, plants. I mean, if you have a few in a certain section, that's okay. But uh, if you just fill your park with them, it's, uh, I don't think it looks very good. All right, here's the entry from Soap and Butter Sandwich. Uh, well, you made this uh, Eurofighter coaster over here. Well, uh, when you make an island like this here in the corner, really, you shouldn't make it look uh, square. Just uh, go into uh, Disable Clearance Checks and just uh, add some uh, variation to the to the to the land like this. And try to make it uh, look uh, well, not as blocky as it uh, looks now, because this looks. Uh, I think this looks pretty bad. Like this is already a lot better in my opinion. Not done yet, but uh, it's an easy way to make it look better rather than just having a square block here. Now there's also an airship here. Um, yeah, I don't really think it looks like an airship. Uh, very blocky. Um, well, the coaster at least uh, is uh, pretty cool. It comes out of this building, has this big launch section. It could travels through some nice inversions. Uh, I also like the interaction with some of these buildings. It passes through this uh, building here. Uh, I think that looks pretty cool. The roof of this building is also, also looks quite nice. Um, and of course it also has this uh, vertical uh, lift hill, which uh, where it pops out of this uh, this uh, windmill. That's uh, that's pretty nice. So yeah, the layout uh, of the coaster is uh, is not too bad, uh, but the I think the the square island here and some of the buildings are a little bit uh, questionable. But still, I think it's uh, it's a good effort. All right, here we have the entry from Carp Runner. Um, well, first off, um, you can see it. Everything is uh, red and white. Uh, when you make a park, it's often not a good idea to have everything in the same two colors. Um, yeah, it, it makes your park look uh, look a little bit bland, I think. And especially if you have several rides next to each other, it's often uh, difficult to, to distinguish them from one another. Uh, but uh, that's not the, the case here. Um, so yeah, there's a few things that... Uh, are a little bit strange in this part. Well, first off, uh, actually, I do love this waterfall. I think this looks uh, absolutely incredible. A really nice waterfall and uh, these plants uh, that are overhanging right next to the cliff. Uh, I think they are great, amazing. Um, here we in the corner we have a swing ride. But yeah, <laughs> it has this uh, huge uh, structure here and it just carries uh, one person. Uh, this support structure is probably a little bit too bulky for a ride that just carries one person. So yeah, uh, I think a more sleek uh, design would have probably worked a little bit better. Uh, for the Eurofighter coaster, there's a very tall tower here, and then uh, 
a steep top hat. When you make a top hat, it's usually uh, better to make it either vertical or uh, do it with an uh, with an inversion rather than with this uh, steep drag. I think the coach could have used uh, some more inversions right in the f first part of the track. Um, I do like this cobra roll, maybe a little bit too much uh, horizontal track here. And then there's also a pair of loops right uh, next to each other here. And then in the end there's uh, there are three parallel rolls uh, right after one another. Um, so yeah, there are some uh, really nice parts in this park and also a few questionable parts, uh, questionable parts of the park. But overall, I think this is uh, this looks pretty cool. Okay, here we have the entry made by Dot Dot Smile. Um, I think it's a nice uh, park in a foresty area on a, on a mountainside with this big Eurofighter coaster in the middle. Also, there's a, a mini suspended coaster here on the side. Maybe a little bit uh, too big. I do like how it goes into this uh, tunnel here with, uh, with the chain lift. Um, here we have the Eurofighter. Uh, it has a launch section that goes up here right in front of the waterfall, traveling through several inversions. And uh, actually from the station it travels into this tunnel here. And then it has a vertical lift hill which uh, pops out of the waterfall here. You can see it better from uh, from this angle. Uh, so yeah, here you can see the, see it pop out of the waterfall and here it does its uh, beyond vertical drop right into uh, several inversions. And here it's just a big mess of uh, track. Um, so yeah, I think the coaster right here in this part does look a little bit uh, messy, but uh, overall it's not uh, it's not bad. I really like the station actually. Uh, these uh, sloped windows, um, they look pretty good. And what I like most about this park is actually the entrance. Uh, this sculpture looks great. It's a mix of uh, dinghy slide, giga cozy track and these abstract elements and some signs. I uh, really like the way that looks. But yeah, um, for a big part the, the landscape is just filled with uh, trees. And, uh, so yeah, usually parks that are more filled with uh, with nice buildings or in a town or uh, have more of a wow effect, you know, they uh, they usually score a little bit better. But uh, I do I do kind of like the, this year of fighter coaster. All right, here we have the entry made by Greenfielder, and sadly, um, well, yeah, while the park does look very impressive, I mean, look at this building, this is amazing work. Sadly, this park had some uh, real flaws. And this is also why it's a usually a bad idea to uh, submit your park to me in the last minute. Because, uh, yeah, then there might not be time to uh, address any flaws that I find. Um, then what are the flaws of this coaster? Well, for, first of all, it's in uh, it's still in test mode. So it isn't even opened. Um, it only has one train. And the worst thing is that it will actually get stuck on top of the lift hill. Here it gets stopped by the block brakes and it will stay there uh, forever. Which is uh, not very good. But yeah, the other rides, uh, I think they look pretty nice. I have some nice uh, shoestring uh, rides here. Also some uh, over here. There's a little parking section here. Uh, there's lots of nice, uh, nice buildings. Uh, when you place buildings on your map, it's usually a good idea to not place them exactly on the edge of your map. And especially uh, stay away for co from corners. Uh, it just makes the buildings look nicer. And if you really put them into a corner, it uh, will look like you really just try to uh, squeeze them in there. So yeah, you should probably remember that when you, uh, when you make some buildings in your park. So yeah, overall, a uh, nice looking entry, but sadly the coaster uh, didn't work. Alright, here's the entry from uh, Birjan. Um, Birjan made this uh, industrial uh, industrial park with this uh, Eurofighter right over here, uh, which is intertwined with a junior coaster. Now, the Eurofighter itself, I, I think it looks uh, quite nice. Uh, has a little bunny hop here, which... Uh, 
many of the voters actually complained about it. It goes through it uh, really fast. Um, yeah, some some of these codes actually do have a bunny hop uh, like this, but it's probably better to make it a little bit longer. Maybe add a flat section here, just so it uh, doesn't look like it really uh, rushes uh, through it. Um, yeah, then they're here there's some more inversions, a cobra roll. Um, this last roll here is uh, really low to the ground. Um, when you make a coaster in a roller coaster tycoon 2, it's often a good idea not to make these rolls uh, so close to the ground, especially if your a coaster still has a lot of speed. Um, yeah, so this coaster does uh, have a lot, a lot of speed here. Um, 60 km per hour is probably a bit too fast for an inline twist like this to look comfortable. Now, uh, what would have probably helped here a bit is uh, if uh, Birion had done some landscaping under this coast there, rather than just a big flat uh, sand area. Also, uh, there's a lot of these buildings here. The buildings, uh, they have uh, kind of nice shapes, but um, when you do make buildings like this, you shouldn't just make them in one or two colors here. Only gray and black is used. Uh, it would, would have probably looked nice if some uh, color accents were added. Uh, for example, uh, what I did in my mega park for one of these uh, rides was just have alternating uh, black and yellow pieces. Something like that. But uh, yeah, it will just help your uh, buildings look a little bit more interesting than, rather than when they are only in one color. Okay, here we have the entry made by uh, Real Steel. Uh, he made this uh, coaster, which is called Takabishe. I believe it was uh, actually also inspired by the real Takabishe. Um, so yeah, it uh, gets launched here. Uh, it does several inversions. Eventually, it add, ends up here at this beyond vertical drop. Um, when you have a big structure on your coaster, also like this beyond vertical drop. You should really not put any of these really bulky structures on top. Um, if you do add structure, just you should, you should try to make it uh, look sleek because this looks uh, kind of strange to me. Now, um, what many people complained about in this entry was that it's just so chaotic. I mean, everywhere you look, there's rides and uh, stuff flying around at high speed, and that makes it uh, really difficult to actually focus. Uh, on the thing that uh, that's important in this park, which is the Eurofighter coaster. So yeah, when you make a ride for the ride creation contest, you should really try to make it the, the center point of the park, the point of focus, and uh, not have too many other stuff flying around to distract you. Okay, here's the next entry. This one was made by Tim22C7. Uh, he made this, uh, I think it's an aircraft carrier. Which I might explain these uh, aircraft on the on the ship, and it has this uh, Eurofighter on top. Um, on first sight, I think it looks uh, pretty cool. Uh, I like the shape of the ship, and the coaster also fits on it uh, quite nicely. Um, something that you should avoid when uh, making uh, coasters like this. Well, first off, there's this launch section right into a 180 degree turn. Um, uh, it's probably best uh, best avoid it unless you make it a more wide turn. And something else you should avoid is uh, there's these uh, very steep transitions. And for example, here he, he goes from steep to horizontal on this small piece. Here he goes from steep to horizontal on this small piece, and immediately to a steep section again. If you do stuff like this, uh, yeah, it, it will just uh, crank up the g-forces on your coaster um, while it's not really necessary. For example, you can see the negative g's are in the red, they're at minus 2, the positive are at 4.56. While in real life, this is a number that uh, you would be able to handle if it's just a short spike. If you do this in the Roller Coaster Tycoon 2, then uh, you really overdid it. So yeah, uh, you should really avoid using these uh, these very short horizontal to steep transitions. Um, other than that, uh, I do think the theming on the park is quite nice. Here he made this uh, hangar, so where these uh, planes come in and out. 
Uh, I think that's quite nice. Here's all, there's also a little other coaster. And other than that, there's also some nice uh, jungle area. Okay, here's the entry from Rice Extreme Cup Challenge. Um, he made this uh, Eurofighter. Um, so yeah, out of the station, it has the vertical lift hill here, and then the beyond vertical drop. Then here it uh, does a bit of a twisty section. Now, it, may, it is sometimes a little bit difficult to see what is actually the track of this coaster, because there's also a coaster right next to it, which has the same colors. Um, so yeah, if you do stuff like that, it will make your coaster a little bit diff more difficult to follow. Now, I do like the sequence of uh, inversion says here. There's this big loop here, and then it travels through this uh, bat wing, and then back, uh, back further. Um, but yeah, this coaster is uh, is sometimes a little bit more, a little bit difficult to follow, because uh, everything's just so dense here. And just like the entry that uh, I showed earlier, um, again here there's just a lot of chaos. Uh, also because this entry is just packed full of rides. Again, when you do a contest like this, you should really try to make your Eurofighter the center point of the contest. And all the other rides should just be supporting uh, rides. And they shouldn't draw away the attention from uh, what you really have to build in this contest. So yeah, it's a, it's a, I think it's a nice entry, but uh, a little bit less rides would have probably been better here. Okay, here's the entry from uh, Artemis. Um, she made this uh, orange Eurofighter coaster here. Now, uh, uh, it leaves from the station here and pops out of the waterfall. I think that's uh, pretty cool. Um, so yeah, then it travels up this vertical lift hill, does the beyond vertical drop into this loop. Uh, then after the loop, there's a sharp 180 degree turn. You should probably uh, avoid that when making a coaster. Um, really, when you have when a coaster has this much speed, it's you should either do a very wide turn or uh, make a sloped turn, something like that. Um, then after the big loop, it does several small loops, several uh, really tight helixes, more corkscrew. I think it still has enough speed here that you could do some other uh, large inversions. Maybe a vertical section into a top hat, something like that. Um, so these really tight helixes, they're probably best uh, avoided uh, unless you're at a, at a low speed. Uh, other than that, I really love all the decorations here. I think this uh, maze especially is really, uh, really awesome. I like how it actually travels uh, through these uh, buildings. I think that, that's, a, that's pretty clever. Also some other nice rides here. So yeah, um, overall I uh, really like this entry. Oh yeah, there's also this top spin uh, and the floor uh, tiles have actually been replaced with these uh, these water tiles from the expansion. I think this also looks uh, really good. Okay, here we have the entry from Mr. Buffalo. Uh, he made a Batman uh, inspired entry. Uh, so there's this uh, huge tower here with these, uh, this clock. Uh, made with a uh, monorail that uh, spins around uh, infinitely. Um, so yeah, it drops out of this uh, vertical tower. Uh, you can actually see it go here. Uh, and it goes through this, uh, I believe it goes through this, oh wait no, it first goes uh, up this big hill. Um, then it goes through the loop here. I think it might have a little bit too much speed, but uh, it's, not, it's not too bad. Um, uh, then it does a turn around here through the building, and then there's these two loops. Now one thing you should avoid is to have uh, these tiny booster sections on placing a track. If your coaster doesn't make it through a certain section of the track, you should really just make the, uh, that section of the track lower instead of adding uh, tiny booster pieces. Uh, other than that, just some nice uh, buildings here. and. Uh, yeah, I also like how the coaster starts here in the, inside this bat cave. It's also a black car here, which is the <laughs> Batmobile. So yeah, lots of nice stuff here. Um, again, 
if you should really see these uh, entries for yourself. Uh, entries like these just have a lot of details and I cannot possibly cover everything in this uh, in this video. So yeah, you can download these entries from my Discord and then you can also check them uh, yourself. Okay, this is the entry from Hank the Supernerd. Um, unlike the previous rounds, uh, he actually made something uh, really small here. Uh, so yeah, this is I think this is the smallest entry that was submitted. Here you can see the his the Eurofighter that he built. It's a very short lift hill, and then actually drops uh, underground. And then, <laughs> just like the entry from uh, from Tim on the aircraft carrier, he also used these uh, steep these very small steep to horizontal transitions to make this very sharp uh, dip here. That is really something you should uh, avoid. Again here, the g-forces are really high at 4.78 and minus uh, 1.72. You should really uh, take care not to make your uh, g-forces uh, so high and this transition should really have been uh, smoothed out in my opinion. Uh, I do like how he decorated uh, everything. Uh, this queue, I think it looks uh, brilliant. And also here's a nice uh, shoestring uh, ride. Uh, so yeah, it, it, it does look nice, but uh, the layout of the coaster could have probably been uh, approved, improved a lot. Okay, here we have the entry from Juan Tonio. Uh, he actually made a really cool entry. Uh, so yeah, as you might be able to see, these guests all have uh, green faces. Uh, that's because he used a different palette. I believe he called it the zombie palette. And he actually also dropped some guests here on the, this graveyard. And since they are all low on energy, they will just walk around very slowly <laughs> like actual uh, zombies. Also, uh, I think this is the place where the guests enter. You can see uh, these guests uh, slowly uh, coming out of and entering into the lake. Like uh, lake zombies, I guess. Uh, there are also some uh, really nice uh, buildings here, uh, which make great use of the palette. These are actually canyon walls, but because uh, I think one of their red colors was changed to green, I think they uh, work pretty well on this building. Now, for the Eurofighter, uh, one thing many people didn't like were actually that it uh, uses all these wooden supports. Uh, Eurofighters should really just use uh, steel supports. Other than that, um, there are some weird uh, design choices, like, uh, for example, uh, the coaster here has quite a high speed and then it drops down into the floor and then pops out uh, here again. Uh, yeah, tr track sections like that are generally best avoided uh, if you're trying to make a somewhat realistic coaster. Okay, here's the entry from Dogs. Um, <laughs> He made quite a strange Eurofighter coaster. Well, the layout, uh, I think it's uh, it's pretty good. Except here at the beginning, uh, when the coaster comes out of the station, there's this triple launch section here. But it doesn't actually work like a triple launch section. Um, the story about this is actually that uh, well, yeah, he sent me a triple launch a Eurofighter uh, as his submission. But... Uh, Eurofighters uh, never start with a triple launch section. Actually, they uh, really hook up into the chain lift at the bottom and then travel upwards using the chain lift only. So yeah, triple launch section would not be uh, very realistic. So that's why I did not allow it. Uh, and then he uh, modified the story of his entry. So uh, it's actually a kids park now, and uh, the this. And triple launch would be uh, too intense, so it's uh, disabled during certain park hours, and that's uh, actually what you see here. Uh, I like the uh, the layout of this Eurofighter. It's just a big uh, rectangular uh, plot, and that's also what uh, Eurofighters usually uh, mostly look like. It's the very uh, compact coasters uh, that don't take too much area. And that's also why parks uh, buy them. Um, other than that, there's just a really nice assortment of uh, of kit rides here. I think this looks uh, really nice. Okay, here we have the entry from Bear. Um, he made this awesome uh, digging machine by using the river rafts uh, like uh, we did in the Ferris wheel round. Uh, he also made the 
made a really cool conveyor belt here. Um, he used it with, by using the air-powered vertical coaster trains, and I believe he led them through an element from the Hardline Twister, and it actually all caused them to change to the to the front car sprite of the coaster to this element. I think it's actually quite convincing as a conveyor belt that's uh, moving uh, rubble from uh, yeah from what the coaster is from what the crane is uh, digging up here. Uh, I love all the track architecture and this, the cables, um, the yeah, just the connections between these tracks. Also, the tracks, uh, they also look really good. I believe he used the uh, hot rod uh, cars uh, from the expansions for this. That's uh, that's really nice. Um, let me quickly uh, stop the rain. And here we have the Eurofighter coaster. Uh, it does a vertical drop here. Um, actually, the right out of the station, it first gets launched upwards here. Then it uh, travels through a section with uh, with several inversions before it uh, travels up this vertical lift, and then um, yeah, it does some more inversions here. I think this is actually quite convincing as a layout for a for a Eurofighter. Uh, what I and many others actually didn't like was the colors of the coaster. I mean, it's orange here, and the inversions all have this uh, weird shade of brown. Uh, may have been better to to also color it uh, orange. Uh, I don't know, but yeah, I think the brown does look a little bit weird. Overall, I really like the way this uh, this entry looks, uh, especially this digging machine is uh, is awesome. Okay, here's the entry from uh, Blonde Tuco. Uh, he made this uh, brewery here with these awesome silos uh, right next to it. <laughs> also some uh, beer leaking out, I think. Um, here's the Eurofighter coaster. Um, that's a very short chain lift, but then uh, drops underground with its beyond vertical drop. I'm not a big too fan of these short uh, chain lifts when people have them. But uh, other than that, the Eurofighter does look pretty cool. So it goes uh, underground here, then it pops out here, goes through this loop, then it does this uh, strange uh, but cool looking inversion here, and then another inversion. Here's a helix, another roll, and then it uh, returns back to the station. So yeah, very simple layout, but I do think it's uh, quite effective uh, how he placed it in the landscaping here. Um, there's also some other nice uh, buildings and rides uh, on the plot here. Here's a shoestring. Uh, uh, well, I don't know what it is. And just uh, this uh, suspended coaster ride. Uh, I guess it's a, it's a flat ride of, of sorts in the German colors called uh, Blitzkrieg. And here there's a Schwarzkopf uh, looping coaster with four loops. Kind of looks like the Olympia looping. This one's called München looping. Uh, but yeah, this one definitely doesn't travel around since it has these tunnels. And tunnels are usually quite uh, difficult to move. Okay, here we have the entry from Kanaifa. Uh, once again, he made a really uh, nice looking uh, plot. So yeah, there's lots of uh, nice cool buildings. Uh, some custom rides. There's a drop tower here. And here there's a small ferris wheel, which uh, Kanaifa really likes to make. Uh, Oh yeah, all these buildings, they're great. If you ever need examples on how to make nice looking buildings, just definitely uh, download this entry and check it out for yourself. Um, also some of my really cool bridges here. They all look different, uh, which is nice. And here there's the Eurofighter. It's quite a simple layout. So yeah, there's vertical lift here, then a loop, then a top hat. Here's sort of a zero G roll. And then another inversion with a helix, then another helix, and then it goes back to the station. So yeah, layout, uh, not too complicated, but uh, just nice. Um, if I made it park, I would have probably toned down the color of it a little bit. Uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe green would look nice. Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, I would have just played with colors a bit until I found something that, uh, that looked nice. But right now they're red. I, th I think it might be a little bit too contrasting and too bright compared to the other stuff that's in the park. But that's just a minor nitpick, because uh, I really like this entry. 
Okay, here's the entry from left-handed coffee mug. Um, he made this uh, Eurofighter over here. Um, it is sometimes quite difficult to see how the layout goes, because uh, it's quite a, a big mess of track here. But uh, yeah, when you follow it around, the layout is actually quite nice. Uh, so yeah, a bit of a launch section here into a nice looking uh, top hat with some really cool supports. Uh, travels through several more um, inversions here. And then finally later it reaches this uh, vertical lift tower with the beyond vertical drop. Then does a cobra roll. A few more inversions before finally it returns back to the station. It's a nice and compact layout. Uh, I think it's situated uh, really nicely here in the landscape. Um, other than that, there's just a lot more cool buildings. Uh, for example, there's this chairlift right here. I really love the station for this uh, chairlift. That looks uh, awesome. Also the station here on the bottom. It has these uh, monorails that I like to uh, use for uh, control rooms. Uh, that's, uh, that's quite a neat uh, trick. Um, there's also another ride uh, going around here with uh, these uh, toboggan trains. And there's also a hotel here. Um, again, this building is just placed in the corner here. It's probably best avoided, just leave one tile from the side. And, uh, that also makes your buildings uh, usually look better. And uh, also as a plus, you can uh, add some layers in front of these walls just to make them look nicer. Um, I do like the interior of this building. And there's also some hot springs in front where guests can actually uh, sit on an invisible bench and uh, enjoy their uh, their dinner. So yeah, that's, uh, that's also a pretty neat trick. Okay, here we have the entry from uh, Mulpje. And once again, this is just uh, superb landscaping. Um, yeah, when you look around, you see uh, lots of cool stuff. Lots of cool buildings as well, nice decorations, uh, nice plants, uh, also a weird uh, palette, which does make some of the trees look kind of weird, like this one over here. It's a completely uh, black base with uh, the green uh, leaves. Um, but yeah, other than the nice landscaping, uh, personally I didn't really like the Eurofighter coaster. Uh, it does have some cool elements. Uh, so here it comes out of the station, does a little roll, and then uh, yeah, it travels upwards here on the vertical lift, then does the beyond vertical drop. But uh, yeah, there's only these uh, crossbars uh, supporting itself. Um, I always put a tower in between uh, for the, for supporting the coaster. So right now it just uh, I think it looks a little bit under supported. Um, so yeah, after that it travels through this loop and then uh, a few times it travels uh, through these uh, mountains. So yeah, it uh, travels through these mountains, pops out a few times into inversions or into more uh, uh, of this uh, sloped inclined uh, track. Um, but yeah, like I said, uh, the landscaping here looks uh, looks really nice. There's also some other uh, nice rides like these uh, river rapids. Uh, so yeah, overall, I think this is a very good entry. Just this uh, this vertical distance looks a little bit under supported. All right, here's the entry from Tim Burbank. Uh, and damn, this is one awesome uh, support tower for the vertical lift hill. It's a really nice mix of uh, track texture and scenery. And uh, yeah, I think this is uh, actually the favorite support tower that I've seen in this round. Other than that, the coaster also has some nice track texture uh, surrounding it. I actually kind of like this fence uh, that he made around it uh, using the steeplechase track and these mon monorail tracks. Um, yeah, other than the uh, well, yeah, after the the beyond vertical drop and the loop, um, the coaster actually sadly does some really weird stuff. Uh, there's here for uh, a series of four consecutive uh, inversions. Uh, I think it might be a little bit uh, too much, uh, to be honest. I do really like the support structure for these uh, inversions. Uh, 
So yeah, at least that uh, does look uh, very cool. Now there's also some other nice buildings uh, like this uh, dome over here. I also really like uh, this building over here. And here in the corner there's actually a bit of a cutout in the map where you can see a mine train going around uh, several times. So yeah, definitely some, uh, some really good uh, stuff in this uh, entry. Right here we have the entry from uh, Mubizis, and this was actually one of my favorite uh, layouts for the Eurofighter coaster. Um, so yeah, the coaster travels up the vertical lift here, then goes over this uh, this top hat right here. Um, but yeah, the thing I mostly like about this entry is that uh, the coaster seems to have the right speed through all the elements. It doesn't go too fast, uh, it doesn't go too slow. No, the height of the coaster is really uh, perfect in every part. So yeah, I think that's uh, that's uh, really well done from uh, from Mubisis. Uh, it's quite a quite a simple layout, but uh, yeah, it's just uh, executed uh, very well. Also like the custom supports here, uh, which the these launched free fall towers and these rotor drop towers were used for. Um, a really nice uh, station with uh, several layers. Uh, I really like the also like the windows. Oh yeah, that's uh, that's really cool. Uh, my favorite part of the map is probably actually these uh, these drop towers that are made on the side of the top hat, and uh, I just love the way their stations look. That's just done in an uh, amazing way. Um, yeah, there's also river rapids going around and some other nice buildings, and the rest uh, sadly is just a uh, jungle. But uh, yeah, I really like this entry, the buildings look very good, the Eurofighter looks very good, so uh, great work. Okay, here you see the entry from Swag Titties. Uh, you may be wondering what this wall is. Well, that's actually because this is an indoor coaster. Uh, Swag Titties uh, recreated this uh, ride called uh, Shell Racer. Or actually, this one's called... Uh, not... Uh, <laughs> I think it's called Not Shell Racer. And this one's called Nut Shredder. <laughs> there are absolutely not recreations of those uh, rides. But yeah, I think he did a really good job on recreating these uh, these uh, layouts. Uh, especially uh, the station is one of my favorite parts uh, of this ride. Um, so yeah, I also like how he didn't uh, put the entire plot inside a building, but he just put this uh, supporting walls. So the person viewing this uh, plot can just uh, fill in the rest uh, by himself. He actually also made some of the other rides that are uh, around these coasters. Um, so yeah, there's this uh, kiddo cruiser, it's just a train going around on an elevated track. And there's also a small orange coaster right next to it. Uh, for the orange coaster, I, I really like these uh, monorail walls with all the garnets on it. I think this looks uh, really nice. So some uh, cool buildings here. But yeah, um, this coaster here, well yeah, it's a bit uh, crowded in this area, but of course uh, for the real rides that's also the case. Uh, they're two intertwined tracks, so uh, it may get a little bit uh, busy in there. Uh, what I actually really like that he did was, uh, there's brakes here, but uh, he actually replaced them here with these uh, booster sections. So now they look like uh, magnetic brakes. Uh, I think that's a really neat uh, trick. I will probably see more of this uh, being done in the future. So yeah, really, I think this is a really good uh, recreation. All right, here in ninth place we have uh, my entry. Uh, I made this uh, coaster uh, on this island with all these uh, volcanoes. I modified the palette to make it look like the water uh, is lava. And I also made the land a little bit uh, darker. Uh, actually for this sea of lava you can see I put some fire, some bubbling uh, goo under the surface and I also put these uh, jumping fountains uh, on invisible paths uh, above the water. I, I actually thought that was a, that was a neat uh, trick. Uh, for the Eurofighter, well the layout is quite simple so uh, here the cars leave the station, do this roll, then they travel up this uh, vertical lift hill then there's beyond vertical drop. There's a loop where it pops out of this, vol this volcano, and uh, here it goes inside again. Then there's this uh, inverted top hat. And right here I made an inclined helix. Uh, 
I was actually quite proud of the way this uh, helix uh, looked. Uh, it works pretty well. And here there's a dive loop and then it does a circle around this launch tree phone then returns back to the station. Now, uh, some complaints I got from people were actually that this uh, loop and this uh, top hat actually look quite unsupported. And uh, to be honest, I actually uh, agree with that. Uh, also, I made this uh, this double uh, swing right here on the side. Uh, people complained that it was actually a little bit too bright. So yeah, I probably should have chosen a different color. Uh, but yeah, I think the ride actually does look uh, quite cool here, right next, uh, well, in this area here on the side. Uh, so yeah, I actually made made this entry in uh, five hours. We're in year nine now. I built everything in five hours, and then I spent four years just adding a lot of uh, references to uh, to uh, members on our Discord in the park. Uh, I have a lot of uh, people in them. A lot of them are just uh, little jokes. Uh, yeah, and I think that actually also helped me uh, score a little bit higher. But yeah, it was uh, really fun to make, and uh, yeah, I actually built it in a really, uh, really short time. So I'm happy that I actually scored uh, ninth place. Okay, here's the entry from Wouter. Uh, he actually made this big uh, cathedral over here. And it also has the tower for the Eurofighter coaster uh, right inside it. And you can see it pop out of the cathedral here. Going through this loop, through this uh, set of uh, inversions here. Oh, he also did this uh, this uh, roll in quite a, a strange way. Um, so yeah, you can see this vertical track here and actually merged it with other vertical track. And the car will instantly uh, turn around here. Um, oh yeah, also some nice uh, custom support work. That's uh, that's pretty cool. And other than that, the map is just filled with nice looking buildings. But of course, the the main focus goes to this uh, huge cathedral. I think this looks uh, absolutely uh, brilliant. And the coaster also looks uh, really nice in front of it, uh, in my opinion. Uh, these buildings here, they're also really nice. Uh, but yeah, I definitely recommend you go uh, check out this park for yourself. Uh, there's also some underground uh, stuff hidden that I don't want to spoil. Uh, and that you can actually see when you download this entry for yourself. Okay, here's the entry from Jens J. Um, he made this uh, really cool looking uh, Eurofighter coaster on this uh, map. Um, well, I'm first going over the map quickly because uh, it's just full of uh, awesome buildings and uh, I also really like the way these uh, paths look. Um, so yeah, it's a nice mixture of base blocks and actual uh, path tiles. Uh, the buildings here, I think they look uh, incredible. They're not too uh, complicated, but uh, so yeah, if you're ever looking for a nice way to do buildings, I think this entry is also uh, a good example for you. There's also a nice little Ferris wheel. Uh, a shoestring uh, swing ride, and yeah, just more awesome uh, buildings here. Uh, let me quickly disable the rain. There's also a nice uh, water coaster here. Uh, so yeah, the, the boats actually go vertical, vertically upwards here in this uh, in this lift. Then they pop out of the mountain here, uh, and then here finally they splice down and follow this track here. Um, so yeah, I, I, I like the water coaster. Uh, it looks pretty cool. Um, the Eurofighter coaster also looks uh, looks really nice. So yeah, the trains come out of the station here, go up this uh, vertical uh, lift hill, then they do this, uh, go through this set of uh, inversions here. Uh, I really like the support structure on this uh, on this top hat here. There's also a, a nice uh, double inversion here. So that sort of looks like a pretzel or a Norwegian loop, it's probably called. But yeah, I think this uh, coaster has a nice speed through all the elements. doesn't really go too fast anywhere. And uh, all the plants, uh, landscape around it just, uh, are just incredible. So great work. Okay, here we have the entry from uh, Risiko. Uh, so yeah, what you immediately see here is... Uh, well, what I immediately see here is that the... 
color palette has been changed, the all the colors look a little bit more uh, yellowish, or uh, it kind of looks like the, there's a sunset uh, going on in this park, and I really like that. Um, the Eurofighter coaster, well, I think the vertical lift looks uh, really cool with these uh, black and white uh, color changes here. And also, there's a nice support structure uh, right in here. Um, the buildings here, they all look, uh, they all look pretty cool. And also the coaster has some nice interaction with all these buildings. Uh, once again though, there's this big vertical section here where the coaster uh, drops into the ground and then pops out somewhere else again. Really, that should probably uh, better be avoided. Uh, I really like the interaction this coaster has uh, with all these buildings uh, that it travels through. Uh, it's a little bit uh, spread out, but uh, not too much for it to be uh, to be annoying to me. So yeah, overall, um, I think this is a really good uh, entry and a well-deserved uh, sixth place. Again, um, there's just so many details here that you should probably download this map for yourself and just check it out. And because uh, I cannot possibly cover everything there, there's to see here in this uh, short time, I have to. Uh, to show this uh, plot to you. All right, in fifth place we have this uh, entry made by Sham Kitchen, and then this this track architecture is just beyond incredible. This is uh, this is so nice. This must have been the, the nicest piece of track architecture I've ever seen anybody make in this game. This is incredible. Uh, just lots of uh, cool uh, buildings and uh, decorations here, all with this. Uh, crazy color palette that the uh, end kitchen likes to make uh, there's so many cool uh, decorations buildings here um, sadly the Euro Eurofighter coaster is not as awesome as the rest of the park uh, yeah it's kind of in an open area here uh, the layout is not it's just uh, simple and not not too amazing uh, so yeah, that's about actually what uh, held back uh, Shen Kitchen from scoring uh, any higher than this. Uh, if the Eurofighter coaster was done exactly in the same style, at the same amount of ex uh, crazy track texture, buildings, etc., this uh, plot would have easily been the winner of the round. But still, this is just uh, incredible uh, work once again from Shen Kitchen. Alright, here we have fourth place. This was the entry from uh, Mamarias. Well, obviously, the first thing you will notice is this big dragon and all the crows uh, flying around it. Uh, I really like the way this uh, this looks. And the Eurofighter coaster, it actually starts underground, then it goes vertically upwards here and pops out of the dragon's mouth. And then, uh, yeah, it does this really nice uh, layout here. And uh, this coaster has some incredible support uh, work. Yeah, I love all the custom supports here made with uh, with scenery and by uh, moving some of the original supports uh, a little bit using uh, small scenery items. Uh, but yeah, if you ever need uh, inspiration on how to do custom supports, I think this is a really good uh, example for you. Uh, these supports, uh, I really love them. Now, there's also a nice uh, palette here with some darker water, so some other uh, buildings around here. But yeah, I think the coaster layout uh, and the supports, they, they make it look really nice. And also this, this dragon, of course, also is a, is a really nice uh, touch to the park. Okay, then we get to the top three. In third place, we have this entry from Skiffa. He actually uh, made a beach here, which was uh, inspired by Scheveningen, which is a Dutch... Uh, uh, yeah, Dutch beach town. That's very uh, that's very popular. It has a big pier. Well, the real one also has a Ferris wheel and a bungee jump tower. And uh, he also added a Eurofighter coaster to it. It's really nice and compact and uh, really fits nicely in this area. Uh, so yes, uh, I, I think uh, size-wise, uh, this Eurofighter is quite realistic. Uh, it does have a, a bit of a strange element. Uh, which is uh, this top hat uh, at the end. Usually when coasters have a top hat, it will be uh, somewhere in the beginning, usually after a launch or something. 
because uh, if a coaster doesn't make it over a top hat for some reasons, we'll be stuck behind it, uh, and that would be a bad thing. So yeah, this uh, that's probably why this is uh, kind of a weird design choice. Uh, but other than that, it just looks incredible. There's some really nice custom supports on it. Uh, also for these uh, towers, I love the yellow highlights on them. Uh, those look amazing. Now, other than that, there's uh, also these uh, some cool rides here. So some uh, aquariums, a uh, little stadium here where you can see dolphins uh, jumping around. Also an orca swimming, uh, swimming, swimming around here. A little carousel inside a building. Skiffa really likes uh, making those. And there's also some other uh, arcade games and, uh, and rides here. So yeah, there's just a lot of stuff uh, to see here and everything's uh, really executed uh, brilliantly. So yeah, some uh, weird design choices on the, on the Eurofighter, but uh, it looks inc everything here uh, looks incredible. Okay, here we have the second place entry uh, from this round. This one was made by Swarmot and he made this uh, really cool looking city. Uh, just look at all these uh, incredible uh, buildings. They all look uh, fantastic. They all, all have a nice mix of uh, normal scenery and uh, scenery from the expansions and also lots of uh, track texture can be found on them. Uh, so yeah, the coaster comes out of the of the vertical lift here into this beyond vertical drop then there's a loop uh, it, uh, it pops out of the wall here travels through the loop again uh, here's another inversion and finally here uh, there's a launch section again into a top hat with a brilliant uh, support structure I really love the way this looks here's a inclined helix and then another inversion here and finally, somewhere around here, it returns back to the station. So yeah, when you make a helix, uh, these inclined helixes usually look way better than the standard flat ones. Um, yeah, like I said, there's just a lot of uh, cool buildings here. Cool little details everywhere. Uh, nice support structures. Uh, there's just uh, so much uh, to look at here. He also uh, inc included many people from the server as... Uh, yeah, as uh, employees in the park, for example, you can see uh, Dirk Link here, uh, actually right over here, standing on the balcony. I recently made a tutorial on how to freeze uh, staff members in place, so that's also what uh, Suwarma uh, did here. He froze a uh, little Dirk Link in place here to overlook the park. But yeah, like I said, just uh, many awesome buildings. Uh, you should really go download this park and check it out for yourself. All these entries can be downloaded from the contest archive on my Discord server. Alright, and finally here we have the winner of this round. Uh, this entry was made by uh, Mekket, who once again uh, slays the competition. Uh, so yeah, just a quick overview here. Just uh, There's this awesome uh, town. It kind of feels a bit uh, steampunk, uh, yeah, just a lot of wood uh, mixed with uh, with uh, metal and stone. Uh, awesome airship here, by the way. Uh, this looks incredible. And of course, there's also the Eurofighter coaster here in the middle. Uh, so yeah, it is really the center point of the of the map. Uh, it has some really nice uh, support work here. Um, what I actually didn't like too much was all the wooden supports under it. You should really go for steel supports when you make a Eurofighter coaster. But still, even if it's not uh, the most realistic thing to do, it does actually look incredible here. Uh, so yeah, that's one thing that, uh, that Mekit is really good at, to uh, make all of this uh, stuff work uh, together. Uh, so yeah, just lots and lots of uh, details all over here. Uh, Lots of uh, height differences as well. They uh, will often uh, really uh, work well to make your map look uh, yeah look more interesting. All these height uh, differences really, uh, I think they look really great. Now you can probably also see that the map is not square. Um, that's because Macket used a palette where one of the colors was uh, replaced with uh, with the same black as the background of the map. Uh, I also recently uh, made a tutorial on how to do that. And 
purple was actually replaced with uh, with the black and what that accomplishes is well normally you can place a grid of red uh, a yellow grid green or purple but since the purple color was replaced with black now you can actually color your uh, land uh, black so for example we can uh, turn it into grass and now we can turn it back into the same color as the background <laughs> I actually also removed uh, some track pieces here, but I mean some land pieces here, but okay. Never mind. Anyway, just like uh, the other entries, uh, I recommend you check this uh, this one out for yourself. Um, there's just so many cool little details here that I cannot cover them all. Uh, <laughs> just look at all this stuff. Uh, you should go and uh, take a look uh, at this uh, by yourself. Uh, just so uh, you don't miss any of the, all these awesome details that uh, Maggot put in, in the map. Alright, um, that was all for now. Um, a new contest will uh, will be uh, starting soon. Um, oh yeah, if you want to join this contest, you should become a member on my Discord server. It's completely free. And uh, yeah, joining these contests is quite easy. And they're a great way for you. Uh, to, to learn to get uh, to get better with, with at this uh, at this game. All right, I hope you enjoyed uh, watching all these uh, entries, and uh, I will see you again in the next video. See you later.